Hey class, for your next assignment, we're going to be looking closely at our thumbprints. What are we going to be doing with our thumbprints? Great question. So for your assignment, you're going to be creating a design of your thumbprint using text. So the lines that are formed throughout your thumb, thumbprint, instead of it being lines, we're going to add text. Uh, this is an interesting way to tell a story through your print. So you're going to be creating a thumbprint. The text can be really up to you. It could be about you. Okay. It could be reflecting on your time at home while we're online, um, uh, online in school. It could be inspirational quotes. You could have uh, th a theme of inspirational, like positive quotes or, um, you know, things of that nature, songs that are meaningful to you, you know, so it's really up to you. Um, I'm also going to be looking at your design layout. So I don't want to see just text. I mean, I obviously want to see the importance of your text and how you're going to create this throughout the thumbprint, but also using a variety of materials, meaning colored pencil, marker, um, if you have access to any digital software like a painting program or Photoshop, you can attempt to do it in a program like that. Um, you could use pencil, pen, um, you could collage something, um, you know, I want to see the size of the text change, the color change. So a lot of variety. So let me show you some examples of what I mean, right? So here's an example. You could see that this person changed the variety of, uh, I'm sorry, the scale of the text throughout. Um, some of it is a little bit larger, like right here. Some of it's a little bit smaller. You could see that they added um, images throughout and underneath. All right, so that would be one way that you could do this. Um, here's another example similar to the first one uh, where they started adding color over and on top of the text. Okay, it seems like both of these used colored pencil. They start to get a little bit more complex. Well, at least these two do. Um, it seems like the next two are used, uh, the person used uh, cutouts from like magazines and cut them out in the shapes of your, um, of your thumbprint. So some of them don't have text, which is fine. Uh, but you can see that some do, right? A lot of this, I'm not really seeing a lot of text. I'm seeing some of it throughout. So, you know, just know that I would like to see if you're going to do something like this or even like this one, I really would like to see at least 75% uh, or more text. So you could leave some space open for color or, you know, I mean, you could use mixed materials. You, If you have like little beads or stones, you could add that to this. Right? It's really just a, a we're going to be, you know, reflecting on ourselves and things that are important to us, right? Um, this one looks like a collage of, of uh, text from, like, magazines or books um, along with uh, pages from a magazine. I mean, I think these look really cool. Uh, this is, like, a really standard one, okay? So, um... I don't mind if you do something similar to this, but I want to see a little bit more variety, like I keep talking about, like maybe color, um, or even scaling the, or different materials, or scaling the text, right? So maybe some of it's going to be larger, some of it's going to be smaller. Uh, this one to me is a little bit boring. This one to me, it's a little bit more exciting and interesting, right? So, um... These are examples of what I'd like to see from you. So how are we going to get to this point? You're probably like, you know, Ms. Dobble, we need to create our thumbprint. How are we going to trace our thumbprint, right? So let me go over what I'd like to see from you today, all right? So we're, we're first going to start by creating.
creating our thumbprint, right? You gotta create your thumbprint, how you're gonna do this. Then um, you can create your print using whatever material that you think may work. In mine, oh, I, I use a variety and, uh, um, and have examples that you can look at, which I just showed you, um, of examples with a whole variety of different materials. Um, but after you create your, your thumbprint, um, attached to the assignment, I also have a template. So you can use the template, which I'll explain to you how you can use this. Um, or if you don't have a printer to print it out, or if you don't want to print it out and you just would rather draw it, you can draw a larger scale version of your thumbprint. Um, make sure that it fits an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, like a standard size paper. So that's how much you're really blowing this up. So you can see my examples here. So let me go through what I'd like to see from you today. So the first thing is you need to come up with your thumbprint. Um, on the left, you can see there are a variety of materials that I kind of experimented with. You could do the same thing. You can create your thumbprint using any materials that you think could work. Um, I have I have an ink pad. So if you have an ink pad, I think that actually works the best. Um, so you can see on the top left here, I used an ink pad, right? And I feel like that came out really nice. In my second experiment, I used paint. So I have acrylic paint. If you have any type of paint lying around your house, you can experiment with that. So I use just black acrylic paint that I have. But if you have any colors, you could use whatever color you want. And you really don't need that much paint. Um, you just need like the bare minimum. And you could see that was like my first print, which is covering over a lot of the line work. And you can see the last one I did had a perfect amount of ink uh, paint on it to really capture the print. You can't see it in my picture here, but if you look at my actual um, print, that you can see I kind of started starring the ones that are good. The next one I tried, which I really thought was going to work successfully, was food dye. Um, the only thing that did was make my finger blue for the whole day. Um, this was not good for me. It was too wet. Um, even when this was like my first print, I started to put down additional prints. You could see the lines aren't as good. Um, and then the fourth uh, experiment I did was Crayola markers. Now you could use like a Sharpie, but your Sharpies are permanent. Um, but any type of marker you have, not that I condone drawing on your fingers at all, but... Um, if you take the ink from the, you know, the washable Crayola marker um, and you just color in your, your thumb with one of the colors, I would suggest a darker color. Um, you can make a pretty successful print with it. So um, not that you have to experiment with multiple materials. I would just find one that can give you the clearest print possible of your thumb. What I decided to use was my ink one because I thought that was the most successful. And then also the Crayola marker came out really good. And I know you can't see them like I said, but they came out good. So I was gonna use this one and that one as reference for my thumbprint for my assignment. So I do wanna see a thumbprint from you today. So you wanna make sure that you create a thumbprint at least star off the one that's the best and attach a picture of it and send it to me through the assignment. The second thing I want to see from you is um, the beginning um, setup of your grid and how you're going to trace over and transfer your thumbprint to the larger scale copy. So you can see I put a star next to the thumbprint, so I'm going to skip through this. So you can see here that um, with my ink pad one that I'm going to use, I just made an oval around it. And then I'm not asking for you to be technical here, but you can eyeball where the center would be vertically and horizontally of your thumbprint. So I drew a vertical line through it and a horizontal line through it. Um, you can look at this like your grid and how you're going to transfer your image onto your final copy. So I kind of broke it down into four sections. 
I did the same with the Crayola marker. So I drew my oval and I put my axis lines through it because I'm going to use both of these as reference for when I go to draw out my um, my thumbprint because before we start adding text you really need to draw the lines of your thumbprint first. The second thing that I want to see from you is um, your printout, right? So you can print out the template that I have attached or you can draw your thumbprint on paper. So this is the second thing I'd like to see from you today besides your thumbprint. So my template looks like this picture on the left. Okay, the reason that I drew it without the axis line going completely through it is because I don't want you to be left with a design that has a axis line running through it. But I wanted to pinpoint where the center points were both vertically and, hor and horizontally to draw your axis. So the printout, if you print this, it's going to be printed out just like this on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, which you can see on the right side I did here. Then what I did was taking a ruler, I just drew with a pencil very lightly my axis line running through the thumbprint vertically and through it horizontally. So now these axis lines or this grid I created matches the grid that I have here and here. So not that you have to do this this week. It's something that you're going to work on next week. This week I want you to prepare and and um, really start uh, prepare your thumbprint and also start coming up with ideas for it, right? Um, but you can see that I can use this as a grid to match here where my lines should go of my thumbprint. So this would be based off of the printout that I have attached. If you don't have a printer or your printers run out of ink or you just don't feel like printing this out and you'd rather hand draw it uh, or draw it by hand, you can. So you can see here the, the other option would be to draw an oval yourself with pencil and uh, lightly eyeball. I'm not asking for technical uh, you know, measurements here unless you really want to. Um, where you think the center point would be um, by drawing your, your vertical axis through and your horizontal. So then this way again, when you go to draw your lines of your thumbprint, you have to work off this reference onto a larger scale of paper. Now make sure when, if you're drawing it yourself, make sure that, you know, this sheet of paper that I took a picture of is eight and a half by 11. So you can see the size of the thumbprint is is fits within that space. So I don't want to see a, uh, if you're drawing it by hand something really small um, or really tiny. I want to see it take up that whole page where we're enlarging these. And listen, if you really had like a bigger sheet of paper and you wanted to go crazy and make this like, you know, 12 by 24 because you wanted to hang it up in your room somewhere, um, by all means, go for it. But I'm just looking for uh, you know, an oval with a with an access through it, um, roughly the size of an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. So again, for today, what I'm looking for your thumbprints, at least one with a grid through it. I have two because I'm using both as reference, and then one or the other, a printed out template with an access through it, or one drawn by hand. All right, so you should attach, I should see in a picture attachment of something like this and a picture attachment of something like this to the assignment. Um, not that I'm asking for this today. However, I will ask for it um, next week. Make sure you start thinking about um, what type of text you're going to include. So is it going to be a quote? Is it going to be uh, song lyrics? Is it going to be about you personally reflecting on your time? right now and so forth. Just things to think about. If you have any questions, please join my Zoom session um, tomorrow from 1 to 1.45 or you can comment or email me and I'll, I'll get back to you. All right.